We open on our protagonist, Greta Evans, a young woman from Montana, surprisingly not named Hannah, as she's arriving at the Heelshire's family mansion in the UK. She's been hired to babysit a porcelain doll the rich couple treat as their son. Looking for any signs of life in this real estate paradise, she goes exploring and is scared shitless by some hunk with a nice trunk creeping up on her. Malcolm, who's a manly man and not an insecure boy. I'm a grocery boy. A gro well, grocery man, you know. I am a shop, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Introduces himself as Malcolm because he's got nothing to hide, and that's what I like about him. Malcolm delivers food to the house once a week. Mrs. Hillshires arrives disgusted and questions Greta why she took her shoes off after entering the house, which is such a rich white person thing to ask. Mr. and Mrs. Hillshires introduce their boy Brahms. Greta chuckles, but they'd be dead ass serious. The old loon runs through a list of Greta's daily chores for Brahms. On a side note, we learn Greta has a restraining order against her abusive ex-boyfriend. In case you were curious. Mr. and Mrs. Hillshires seeming very flustered as if they were leaving Greta to, to die or something, depart to fulfill their lifelong dream of raving at Coachella. The first chance she gets, Greta says fuck it to the chores and covers Brahms with a blanket because it keeps giving her the stank eye. Nighttime rolls around and she seems to forget just how fragile porcelain is. I mean, you literally have one job, Greta, don't break the doll. She starts losing her marbles, hearing noises, and having nightmares about Brahms. Malcolm, putting on that British charm, flirts with Greta, explaining that the real Brahms died in a fire when he was eight. And then he proceeds to ask Greta out, which was an odd way to go about it. She says yes because nothing butters her muffin more than talk of a barbecued child. Greta takes a shower to prep for her date, but stops when she starts to feel like somebody's watching her, playing tricks on her. Oh, uh oh Dressed very poorly for a manhunt, she climbs into the attic in search of the intruder. She's locked in. Instead of being a negative Nancy, our gal makes a night of it and gets some rest before her special someone sets her free the following morning. Like it was just another Monday, Greta spends the afternoon with Malcolm, as if the scariest fucking thing just didn't happen the night before. Greta hears some noises outside her room. Brahms has moved and is sitting on the edge of the bed. She's spooked, now convinced the doll is alive. I promise I'll be good. He offers her a sandwich. Transition to the Hillshires, packing their pockets with pebbles, and I guess walking to California? They don't quite make it. Greta proves to Malcolm that Brahms has life in him. First things first, Greta's a realist. Yeah, we, we really don't even know what we're dealing with here. Is it a ghost, some sort of trapped spirit? Or a boy. Brahms is a boy. Yeah, yeah he is. In our next chapter of Storytime with Malcolm, he explains that Brahms actually killed a girl before he tragically died in a fire, indicating maybe this doll isn't the polite sandwich artist he seems to be. Cole, Greta's abusive ex-boyfriend, shows up at the house. To put it bluntly, he's a real cock. Brahms sends Cole a warning message to get out. Cole can't keep his hands to himself, no matter how hard he's trying to. Cole can't control his temper roll. Ooh, you suck. Get your things and get out of here. Oh boy, did he fuck up. The house starts creaking. Cole stops to listen to the man in the mirror. There's something. His Brahms. Brahms climbs through, asking Cole to. Yeah. Cole is slain! Greta and Malcolm make a break for it and find the now not-so-secret passages behind the walls. They stumble upon Brahms' dope-ass bachelor pad. Brahmsy takes a wicked plunge through a wall as if he was a pitcher of red liquid. Oh, yeah! Malcolm holds him off while Greta escapes. Remembering she still needs groceries for next week, she runs back to save Malcolm. She goes full nanny and puts Brahms to bed. Brahms! 
time for bed now. Singing him a lullaby. I like the way you work it, Brahms diggity. I got to bag it up, bag it up, babe. As a kiss goodnight, she feeds him a screwdriver to the gut. Now a little peeved, he throws Greta against a wall and lifts her by the neck with the strength of a malnourished scrawny man-child who's been living in total isolation for the past 20 years. She escapes in the nick of time, grabs Malcolm, and gets in a car. They drive away in a storybook ending. And they'll always be together. If you're a fan of dudes showing off some chest hair, putting a dress on a burlap sack and calling it a girlfriend, or are just satisfied with a peeled, uncooked potato for lunch, then this movie's for you. Reach for your food. Drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more horror recaps. Comment down below what movies you want to see butchered next. 